This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain an action, comedy, sci-fi film called Superhero Movie. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Rick Riker is a clumsy teenager who can't even ride the bus without hitting his head on the doors. He has a huge crush on his classmate and next door neighbor, Jill Johnson, but she's dating someone else and barely notices him. On their way to a field trip, Rick's best friend, Trey, advises him to forget about her because she hangs out with the popular crew and notes that those students never socialize with people outside their group. Soon, the students arrive at the amalgamated genetics lab, where they find various genetically engineered animals. When Rick notices Jill looking at an exquisite bird, he tells her he'll take a photo of it for the school newspaper. Dr. Strom, the head of the research department, notes that flash photography is not allowed because the animals are sensitive to light, but Rick is not paying attention. The bird bursts into flames and drops to the ground as soon as he takes the picture. He immediately stomps on it to put out the flames. When it sticks to his shoe, he kicks it away and the dead bird hits Jill's boyfriend, Lance Landers. As Lance is about to punch Rick, his uncle, Lou Landers, grabs his shoulder and stops him. Strom introduces Lou to the students as the visionary and CEO of the company. A while later, Rick notices Lou coughing up blood, so he asks if he's all right. Lou recognizes Rick as the son of Blaine and Julia Riker and asks how his parents are doing. So Rick reminds him that they died horribly nine years ago. As soon as Lou leaves, Lance shoves Rick into an animal pen. Rick lands on poop, so he grabs a bottle marked H2O and sprays it on his shirt. He soon discovers that the bottle is not filled with water, but a compound called H2O9. Strom explains to the class that the substance is a strong aphrodisiac that can attract any animal. Not long, the animals in the lab start jumping on Rick. Strom then shows the students a tank containing genetically enhanced dragonflies. He notes that there's supposed to be seven in the tank but Jill only sees six. The seventh dragonfly soon emerges and bites Rick on the neck. Rick bumps into a shelf and spills more H2O9 on himself, just as Strom opens the gate to let more animals into the lab. Unable to resist the aphrodisiac, various animals pile on top of Rick. Later, the school informs Rick's Aunt Lucille that her nephew just walked off the class trip. Not long, Rick staggers into the house ailing from the dragonfly bite. He soon passes out on his bed while his uncle Albert gives him advice about going through puberty. In the amalgamated headquarters, Lou reveals to his business partners that he has a terminal illness and he only has an hour to live. To keep himself alive, he intends to use an invention that can alter DNA and restore his body to perfect health. Strom warns Lou that things could go wrong because the machine hasn't been tested, but Lou insists on using it. Soon after activating the device, it begins modifying Lou's genes, but it explodes due to overheating. One of his business partners, Carlson, assumes that the machine didn't work and tells Lou that he'll be delighted to take over the company when he's gone. When Lou grabs his hand, Carlson's life force seems to transfer to Lou. Carlson turns into an old man in an instant and drops dead. Lou then gets off the machine and tells his partners that they need to make some personnel changes. Strom emits a high-pitched scream as he watches Lou drain the life force of his surviving business associates. After being unconscious for five days, Rick wakes up and discovers that the dragonfly bite has healed. While researching the effects of the bite on the internet, someone using the handle ProFX5016 contacts him and claims to have answers. The unknown individual advises Rick not to seek him out because he'll come to him. After the start of the science fair in Rick's school, the principal announces that Stephen Hawking will work at the university as a visiting professor and perform experiments on a rare element called ceruleum. Hawking notes that he's depressed because of his disability, so he invites the students to get high with him, but no one is interested. While Rick attempts to drink from the water fountain, his hands get stuck on the ceramic. When he pulls his hand away, he notices hair growing on his palm. He tries pulling his other hand off the fountain, but it gets detached from the wall and hits Lance in the back of the head while remaining stuck to his hand. Lance tries hitting him in retaliation, but he manages to dodge his punches. However, Rick fails to avoid a third punch because he's not paying attention. 
While running from Lance, Rick's hands get stuck on the principal's chest when he bumps into her. When he pulls it away, he slams into Hawking, who in turn crashes into a beehive. Later that day, Rick realizes that he's gained new abilities. So he tests them by climbing onto a wall and breakdancing. Suddenly, he sees an old woman about to get hit by a speeding truck. So he pushes her away. The truck slams into Rick, but he emerges without even a scratch. The witnesses call him a hero, even though the woman he pushed out of the way gets crushed in a tree removal equipment. When Rick gets home, he tells Albert and Trey that he seems to have gained superpowers. He surmises that he might have armored skin because he was bitten by a dragonfly with a tough exoskeleton. Albert is skeptical, so he tests it by stabbing Rick with a knife. The two are convinced when the knife gets bent while Rick remains unharmed. Trey and Albert encourage him to use his abilities to get fame and money, but Rick stresses that he just wants to be an ordinary kid. Albert then reminds him that it's not what his father wanted for him. Rick goes to his room and looks back at the night he went to the opera with his parents when he was just a child. After the presentation, Blaine noticed that young Rick was bothered by the injustice portrayed in the show. So he told his son that he would change things someday and people would expect him to be a hero. A mugger suddenly asked them for their belongings at gunpoint. While the mugger attempted to take Blaine's family ring, Rick decided to be a hero and fought the thief. While they were struggling to take control of the gun, the weapon fired and hit Blaine and Julia. Another bullet hit a streetlight which fell on Julia's head. The mugger ran away upon seeing Blaine and Julia lying on the ground. Blaine realized that he was dying, so he told Rick that Albert would take care of him. Noting that Rick would inherit all his assets, Blaine advised him to sell his shares of Google and noted that it was worthless. He urged the boy to invest heavily in Enron. Then Blaine gave him the family ring and told him that it was his destiny to be a hero. While standing outside the house, Rick hears Jill fighting with her mother. Soon, Jill comes out and tells him that she's going through a tough time because her parents want her to go to college, but she wants to be a dancer. When Rick expresses his support for her, Jill remarks that he's more supportive than her boyfriend. She notes that Lance might not be the right man for her because she's beginning to think that she's just dating him to rebel against her father. Lance then arrives in a fancy car to pick up Jill. Before running off, Jill asks Rick to take her for a ride in his car one day. Rick goes on the internet later that night to find an affordable car. Suddenly, a video from Professor Xavier pops up on the screen and advises him to go on a training program to control his powers. The next day, Rick goes to the bank with Albert and Lucille to apply for a car loan. Lucille goes inside with him and Albert awaits in the car with Mr. Thompson. The loan officer immediately turns down Rick's application. Rick pleads with him and notes that he really needs a car, but Thompson stresses that it's not his problem. When a man robs the bank, Rick helps him get away by opening the door for him. Thompson castigates him for letting the man get away, so Rick tells him that it's not his problem. Suddenly, Rick hears two gunshots outside. He soon discovers that the robber shot his uncle, but he managed to survive. That night, Lou's vital signs suddenly drop while he's monitoring it so he absorbs his secretary's life force. While Rick watches over Albert at the hospital, Jill stops by to console him. Rick notes that it's his fault that Albert got shot because he didn't stop the robber. He contends that he's a failure, but Jill reminds him that his uncle believes in him and adds that it's never too late to be the person he wants to be. When he leaves the hospital, Xavier approaches him and takes him on a tour to the school for the non-Asian gifted. Xavier tells him that he started the school to help people control their powers and use them to do good things. The professor tells Rick that he has the potential to be the best superhero, but Rick points out that he can't even fly. Xavier assures him that he will learn to do it once he understands the true nature of heroism. Mrs. Xavier soon interrupts their tour to scold her husband for having an affair with Invisible Girl. After beating up Invisible Girl, Mrs. Xavier continues to berate him for betraying his children, including his newborn. Xavier expresses doubts that the baby is his, so Mrs. Xavier proves it by prompting the baby to display his telekinetic powers and slam Xavier against the wall. Rick is dismayed that Xavier wouldn't be able to teach him the secret to becoming a superhero. Mrs. Xavier then smacks him in the head and tells him that he only needs to make himself a costume. Soon after creating his dragonfly costume, 
Rick goes on top of a skyscraper. He jumps down in an attempt to fly, but he splatters onto a gargoyle statue. Despite his inability to fly, Rick becomes famous as the dragonfly after performing extraordinary acts of heroism all over the city. At the amalgamated office, Strom informs Lou that he must kill each day to survive. He discloses that Lou will need ceruleum, so he wouldn't have to kill every day. After learning from a news article that Hawking is experimenting with ceruleum, Lou plans to steal the rare element from the university's lab. Rick learns that the local newspaper is paying money for pictures of the dragonfly, so he applies as the photographer. During the interview, he hears that there's a police standoff at the university, so he immediately runs off to check out the situation. Lou, donning a suit of armor and calling himself the Hourglass, has stolen the ceruleum from the lab. When the dragonfly arrives, he immediately knocks the hourglass to the wall. The hourglass, however, manages to hurt the dragonfly by hurling three titanium blades at him. The hourglass then escapes by blowing a hole in the wall. While Rick tends to his wounds at home, Trey points out that he must be vulnerable to titanium blades. Trey offers to be his partner, but Rick contends that he doesn't need help. Lucille notices Rick staring at Jill through the window, so she warns him that being the girlfriend of the dragonfly could be dangerous because his enemies will attack the people he loves most. That night, Rick meets Jill outside a theater, where she just auditioned for a part in a play. Rick wants to tell her that he's the dragonfly, but he remembers Lucille telling him that he needs to keep his identity a secret. As Jill walks home on her own, thugs start chasing her into an alley. Before they can attack, the dragonfly appears and fights them off. Jill watches him affectionately as he slams a man's head against the wall. He continues showing off by mercilessly breaking the thug's arm. After beating up all the assailants, Jill gives the dragonfly a passionate kiss as a reward for saving her. Meanwhile, Lou learns he can gain immortality by killing thousands of people. Jill spends Thanksgiving at Lucille's home. As they prepare the turkey, Lance arrives and tells Jill that he invited Lou. Rick soon comes home still wearing his dragonfly costume. Lou goes to his room to check on him while Lucille is busy, but Rick stays out of sight by clinging to the ceiling. When Lou returns to the dining room, Rick enters the house wearing casual clothes. During dinner, Lou and Rick notice each other's injury, so they both make excuses to hide their secret identities. Before they can even grab a bite, Lou tells Lance that they have to leave. Later on, Rick expresses his love for Jill while Lucille sleeps and passes gas uncontrollably on the couch. They almost kiss while desperately trying to ignore the smell, but they're interrupted when Lou returns to the house as the hourglass. Rick tries fending him off by throwing a metal ball, but it bounces all over the house and ends up hitting him in the head. The hourglass proceeds to attack Lucille while Rick is unconscious. Rick later goes to the hospital to check on Lucille, but the doctor tells him she died. The doctor then tells him that Albert has regained consciousness, but he advises Rick not to give him any bad news, because it can send him back into a coma. However, the doctor casually mentions that Lucille is dead while entering the room. After burying Lucille, Rick tells Jill that he's not in love with her because he knows that her life will be in danger if they're together. Rick ends up getting depressed and stops doing heroic acts. Trey reminds him that the Hourglass is planning to kill thousands of people, but Rick argues that he can't be a hero because he couldn't stop the Hourglass from killing Lucille, and he can't even fly. Albert points out that he may fail as a hero, but the most important thing to do is for the best reasons. After convincing Rick to become a superhero again, the trio realizes that the Hourglass will strike the Empire City Convention Center, where thousands of people will gather for the World Humanity Awards. Albert drives Trey and Rick to the venue, but they still don't know who the Hourglass is. Meanwhile, Lou arrives at the convention center with Lance and Jill. Later, Rick asks Lou for help, unaware that he is the Hourglass. So Lou tells him that he saw the Dalai Lama, holding a canister of ceruleum. Rick dresses up as the Dragonfly and attacks the Dalai Lama as he is about to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. Suspecting that the Dalai Lama is hiding ceruleum under his robe, the dragonfly strips him naked. A brawl ensues at the convention center after the dragonfly fights off the security team trying to take him down. Lou soon changes into his costume and flees into the next convention hall after getting a hold of the ceruleum. The dragonfly follows him and realizes that the hall is holding the HeroCon, where attendees dress up as their favorite heroes and villains. 
In an attempt to escape, the hourglass blows up the ceiling, which lands on the dragonfly. When the hourglass throws a titanium blade at the dragonfly, Jill jumps in front of him to block it and gets hit in the belly. While carrying Jill in his arms, the dragonfly goes to the rooftop to confront the hourglass, who is already in the process of draining the life force of people attending the convention. Upon his arrival, the dragonfly grabs onto the hourglass's arm and funnels some of the energy to Jill. Soon, Jill regains consciousness and finds out that the hourglass is only seconds away from achieving immortality. The hourglass then throws a bomb with a suction cup at the dragonfly. As he tries to get it off, it ends up sticking to his crotch, so the dragonfly somersaults backwards to position his crotch in front of the hourglass. The dragonfly survives when the bomb detonates, but he soon learns that Jill fell from the building. When he jumps down to follow her, Jill notices his family ring and realizes that he's Rick. Jill tells him that she no longer cares if she dies as long as she is in Rick's arms. When they kiss, wings emerge from the dragonfly's back, allowing them to fly back to the rooftop. Later on, Rick soars into the sky with Jill, promising that he'll forever be a superhero as long as there's crime and injustice. As they enjoy the view of the city, they both get hit by a helicopter. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.